uh, now uh, we can get back to where we left off. Are you able to see the uh, Windows Journal screen? I am starting the fourth lecture of uh, basic electrical circuits. And in the previous lecture, we looked at what happens when you connect components in uh, series and parallel. Uh, it was rather simple, but we tried to do it rigorously so that we get all the sign conventions correct. And in case anybody had any doubts, we also uh, Try to do it rigorously so that all those doubts are clear now. Okay. In this lecture, what we will do is to discuss what are known as control sources. Now, when I say control sources, what I mean is they are either voltage sources or current sources, but the difference is the voltage sources and current sources that we discussed so far denoted by these symbols are known as independent sources. That means that their values are not dependent on anything else in the circuit. Their values will be given and they will be fixed. I don't mean necessarily that they will be constant with time. We have been considering sources that are constant with time. Later we will see independent sources which can change with time. But here what is meant by independent is that it is independent of any other electrical variable in the circuit. So consequently these uh, control sources which are also sometimes known as uh, dependent sources, what happens is these things their values will depend on some other electrical variable in the circuit. So depending on uh, what they are controlled by, we have uh, four different types of sources. We have uh, two types of sources that is a voltage source and a current source and each of these can depend on either a voltage or a current. So that gives us four kinds of control sources. Okay. Uh, there is a question from Harsha. Please go ahead. Harsha? of sources 
a voltage source and a current source and they can be controlled by as a type of control or uh, say dependent on they could be dependent on either a voltage or a current okay so these two signs these two possibilities give you four types of uh, control sources there are voltage control voltage source and a voltage controlled current source similarly we can have a current controlled voltage source and a current control current source okay now what is the meaning of a voltage control voltage source a control source is denoted by this symbol We use a rhombus instead of a circle, just to uh, distinguish it from independent sources, and make sure you understand right away that they are control sources. The value of this would be k times v x, where v x is the voltage between some two nodes in the circuit. Okay. Now it is very important to understand. that this vx is not something that i apply from outside but it is any voltage in the circuit okay i'll call these uh, na and nd and these two are any two nodes in the circuit okay now uh, what does it mean just to give you an example so say i have v not and connected to two resistors r1 and r2 the current flowing here would be v not divided by r1 plus r2 because the series combination of uh, uh, the current so series combination of the resistors results in a single resistor which is the sum of the resistances and the voltage across this is v not times r2 divided by r1 plus r2 now i could have a current Uh, source control uh, sorry i could have a control voltage source a voltage control voltage source in the circuit which i'll show in red that is let's say k times vx and vx could be defined to be this one okay so vx is something that is given to you in the definition of the circuit 
Now in this case, what it means is the voltage across these two points would be K times V0 times R2 by R1 plus R2. Okay. So it very much depends on what this Vx is and Vx is the voltage between these two nodes in this particular circuit. So in general Vx could be defined to be anything that depends on the circuit and the voltage of the voltage controlled voltage change will depend on the uh, depend on Vx. Okay, so that's what is meant. And also this K is uh, the constant, a property of the uh, voltage controlled voltage source and it is dimensionless as you can easily guess. It's a dimensionless constant. Okay. Now the next type of uh, So the next type of uh, uh, control source is a voltage controlled current source. Now Again, the symbol for it is similar to that of a current source, but with a rhombus instead of a circle. And what it means is the value of this will be some g times Vx. Again, Vx is the voltage between some two nodes of the circuit. Okay, so let's say we have Na and Nb. Vx is the voltage between Na and Nb. So what this means is this will maintain a flow of current which is dependent on the voltage between Na and Nb. Okay. So again, uh, taking the same simple example. So if I have V0, I have V0 R2 by R1 plus R2 across the uh, resistor R2 and I could have a controlled current source which is G times Vx where Vx happens to be defined like this in this circuit. Vx is the voltage between these two nodes. So what this means is this will uh, the controlled current source will force a current which is equal to G times V0 times R2 by R1 plus R2. Okay. So if you let's say you connect a resistance to this R3 Clearly, we cannot have a current source with nothing connected to it. Though sometimes we draw it like that, uh, in a circuit, for KCL to be satisfied, a current source always has to be connected to something where the current can flow. So here, let's say it's connected to a resistance R3. What happens is that the voltage across R3 would be G times R3 times V0 R2 by R1 plus R2. Okay, basically it is equal to G times Vx, the current source value times R3 and that in turn equals this one. Okay, so this is what a voltage controlled uh, current source does. Okay, it uh, looks at the voltage between some nodes and 
gives you a current that is related to related to uh, this Vx, okay, where Vx is the voltage between certain nodes, okay. So again, what is most important to understand is that I have not connected a voltage source uh, Vx to this whole thing. Vx happens to be some uh, voltage in the circuit, which is defined appropriately, okay. And next we can consider current control sources. Let's say I have a current controlled voltage source. What it means is that it is a voltage source whose value depends on some current in the circuit. And what is this current Ix? There is some wire or some branch in which a certain current Ix is flowing and the value of this voltage source depends on the current Ix. Okay. So again, I will take the same example. V naught R1 R2. The current flowing here is V naught divided by R1 plus R2. And let's say I had a current controlled voltage source, okay. And the current controlled voltage source is defined to have a value R times Ix. And in this case, let's define Ix to be the current flowing in R2, okay. Ix is the current flowing in R2, okay. What it means is then the voltage across this would be R times Ix which happens to be equal to R times V0 divided by R1 plus R2 in this particular circuit. Okay. Now, first of all, uh, one thing I have to point out here. This is a dependent voltage source and the voltage depends on a current and it is directly proportional to a current, okay. And this constant of proportionality, uh, it is multiplying a current and giving you a voltage, okay. The voltage across this is R times Ix. So the constant of, dimen uh, constant of proportionality has to have dimensions of resistance. Okay. Similarly, in the previous case, this constant of proportionality multiplies uh, this voltage Vx to give you a current. So this has to have dimensions of conductance. Okay. And finally, we take the last of the different sources, which is a current controlled current source. Again, it is a current source, but the value depends on another current. Okay. That is the current being forced by this current source equals k times Ix, where Ix can be any current in any part of the circuit. Okay. So Ix is flowing through this wire, 
So in general, you would define the current through some branch to be IX. I will yet again take my voltage divider example. R1, R2. The current flowing here is V0 divided by R1 plus R2. If uh, this voltage is V0, okay. And let me define a current control current source to be from K times Ix, where Ix is the current through R2. This is something that I would define. Okay. Now, what it means is that this current source here will force a current which is K times V0 by R1 plus R2. Okay. Meaning, if I connect a resistance to it, This will force a current K times V0 by R1 plus R2, which means that the voltage across this would be current times the resistance K times V0 by R1 plus R2 times R. Okay? So that is the definition of a current control current source. Okay, so that's the definition of uh, all the four uh, control sources. Now this constant of proportionality, it is multiplying a current to give a current, so it is dimensionless in this case. Okay, so just as a quick summary, we have four types of control sources. Voltage control, voltage source, voltage control, current source, a current control, voltage source, and a current control. source. This is abbreviated to a VCBS and this is VCCS, CCVS and a CCCS. And a voltage control voltage source gives a voltage equals K times Vx where Vx is some voltage in the circuit. And voltage controlled current source forces a current G times Vx, where Vx is some voltage in the circuit. Current controlled voltage source provides a voltage across its terminals, which is some R times Ix, where Ix is some current in the circuit. Similarly, current controlled current source forces a current through it, which is K times Ix. Okay? So that is the, those are the basic definitions. Now uh, I went through all the four definitions because they are sort of routine. Now I will take all the questions. Any questions that you have regarding control sources or anything else. Okay.
there are a few questions. One is, uh, can the uh, can the control source be dependent on some value that is given by a by an independent source? Okay, that is. Let's say I have a VCVS that is a voltage control voltage source, and this says that this is K times Vx. Now Vx is defined to be the voltage between these nodes. Yes, these uh, this voltage can very much be given by some uh, independent source. This is entirely possible. Okay, it de depends on the circuit. Now this uh, uh, V naught. I mean basically. This voltage control voltage source, which is this part, gives you a voltage which is K times this voltage minus that voltage. Okay. Now uh, that can be any value. It can be given by a voltage source. It can be a result of some other complicated circuit. All you have to do is define these two nodes across which Vx is measured, and that can very well be uh, across a independent across an independent voltage source. Okay. So that's possible, and it's also possible that it comes from yet another dependent source. Okay. So let's say this Vx could be the result of a current control voltage source, where this Ix is the current flowing somewhere, and this voltage source is R times Ix. Okay. All of these are possible. That Vx can be anything. It has to be some voltage defined properly in the same circuit. That's all that's there. Okay. Now, whether Vx comes from uh, an independent source or a dependent source, all that is uh, all that doesn't matter. That's only uh, the detail of the circuit. Okay. It can be the voltage across a resistor, or in case of a current controlled uh, uh, case, it could be the current from a from an independent current source or a dependent current source, whatever it is. Okay. And the other question was, how do I find the value of K and so on? Now these are given to you. Okay, normally, if you have an independent uh, voltage or a current source, all you have to do is to specify the value of the voltage or current. Now, if you have a dependent source. Let's say voltage control current source. You have to specify Vx, that is the nodes across which Vx is defined. And again, Vx, the voltage has a polarity, so you have to say which is the plus and which is minus of Vx, and the value of K. Okay, that's a given. Just like you give the value of a resistor or, a, or an independent voltage source, you have to give the value of K. Similarly, if you have a voltage controlled, uh, sorry, if it's a voltage controlled voltage source, you give Vx and K. Voltage controlled current source, you have to give Vx and G. All this will be given to you. Current controlled voltage source, you have to say what Ix is, which direction it is, and some R, which is the proportionality constant. And a current control current source, Ix and K. Okay. Okay. Now it looks like uh, though I have finished with all the questions. Now my question for the participants is: Are these sources linear? Okay, we discussed uh, four types of control sources. Are they linear or not? According to the definitions I have given.
The question is, are the control sources linear? The way I have defined them, okay? Okay, I think many of you have responded and you said that they are linear. Some said they are non-linear, I am not sure why. They are very much linear, okay. I will take the example of a voltage control current source, but exactly the same thing applies to all of them. If I have a voltage control current source, let's say Vx is uh, defined to be the voltage between these nodes N A and N B and the current source value is some J times V X. Okay. So what is the value of this current? Let's say if V X equals V1, it will be J times V1. If V X equals V2, it will be J times V2. And if V X happens to be V1 plus V2, this will be G times V1 plus V2 and so on. So it does obey superposition, right? Because the current will be G times whatever the voltage is. And in fact, from this relationship, directly you can say it is linear. Okay. This is uh, this denotes proportionality to Vx. Okay. The current is proportional to Vx, and such a relationship is very much linear. Okay. It a superposition. So that means that they are linear. In fact, the four types of uh, control sources we discussed are linear, controlled sources. Okay. So all of these are linear control sources. Any other questions about control sources? Uh, right now, I will not use them. I showed very simple circuit examples with uh, control sources. Later, when we come to full place circuit analysis, we can analyze circuits that include these control sources. Okay? Any other questions about uh, control sources? Now there is a question uh, which asks uh, can a circuit be entirely made of control sources and it is entirely possible, okay. That is you can have a circuit which has only control sources and nothing else. Uh, we will not look at how to realize control sources of course that uh, depending on uh, circuit technology there are different ways of uh, realizing control sources. But yes, there, is, there, is, there are circuits which can be made completely of control sources, meaningful circuits. In fact, I will show an example of uh, one of them soon, okay. Now, for those of you who came late, control sources or uh, linear control sources that we were discussing are either voltage sources or current sources whose value depends on some other voltage in the circuit or some other current in the circuit. Now, all these lectures are going to be recorded, so you can go back and watch the entire lecture, okay. They will hopefully be put up uh, soon, today or tomorrow and you will be able to watch that. <laughs> Is the audio not clear?
Is the audio not clear? Okay, it looks like uh, for some people audio is not clear, but for others it is. Perhaps you can also check the settings at your end to see if the audio gets better. Okay. Now some people are there, raise their hands. I will uh, ask them to ask a question. R, the name is just R. Please go ahead. I used to wait. Hello. Hello, yes. Hello. Wasu, please go ahead. Okay. Now, uh, since somebody raised the question of uh, whether a circuit can be entirely made of controlled sources, I will show the example right away. I was thinking of doing it later. So, let me show an extremely simple circuit. It is a voltage controlled current source I am using here. Here on, I will just label it VCCS. Okay. Please mind the direction. Now this is the VCCS and its value is G times Vx. And I will define the voltage to be across the voltage controlled current source itself. Okay. Vx. Okay. And let me call this uh, these two terminals. One and one prime. Okay. Now uh, this is very much a legitimate circuit. Now if I give this to you in a black box and ask you to find out what it is, what it looks like electrically between these two terminals one and one prime, what will you do? I would like answers from participants. That is, I gave you a black box with two terminals and you have to find out what it is by making some electrical measurements. What will you do? The question is, I mean this comes up repeatedly, right? Many times what happens is, you may have a complicated circuit and you have two terminals coming out of the circuit. You have to find out what it looks like. When I say looks like, looks like electrically from those two terminals, okay? Now we have discussed this before while uh, uh, discussing series and uh, parallel elements. If I have two terminals and I have to find out the electrical characteristic or in general this could be the electrical characteristic of a two terminal element, what should I do? What is the experiment I would do or the thought experiment that I would do? That's the question. So I have a box with two terminals, one and one prime and I have to find out what, it's look, what it looks like and obviously I mean electrically. Yeah, 
the question for the participants is what experiment should I do or what thought analysis I should do to find out what it looks like electrically from those two terminals. Clearly the assumption is that you cannot touch any other part of the circuit. The only things that are accessible to you are those two terminals. Okay. I have not got any correct answer so far, so please try again. The question is very simple. I have a box with two terminals, or I just have a two terminal element. You have to determine what it is. That is obviously, when I say what it is, it's IV characteristic. And we have done this before. So what is it that I should do to find out what element it is or what characteristics it has? Unfortunately, I did not get any uh, correct answers, so I am going to explain that. This is very simple, right? Uh, how do we distinguish one element from another? How do we know if something is a resistor or a voltage source or a current source? First of all, you may be told in some cases, but I am saying if you are not told. You have to evaluate the IV characteristics to find out what it looks like in the IV plane. Okay? So you vary the current and find the voltage or you vary the uh, voltage and find the current. Okay. And from the resulting characteristics you can figure out what it looks like. Okay. Electrically. I say two terminal element, it could be a two terminal element or a black box. And it's understood that you don't yet know, you don't know what the element is. Okay, so we're just given a box like this. I know. You have two terminals, so all you can do is you apply a voltage, let's say we test, and you measure the current. Okay. You could apply a current, I test, and measure the voltage. Okay. That is, measure the voltage across the element. Apply current and you measure the voltage. Now, in a lab, if you are given a two terminal box, this is what you would have to do, and also in analysis, this is what you would have to do. Okay, you either apply a current and measure the voltage, or you apply a voltage and measure the current through the terminals. You apply voltage across the two terminals and measure the current through the terminal. Similarly, you 
push a current into the terminal and measure the voltage across the terminals. And you use the appropriate uh, sign conventions, which is the passive sign convention. That is what we will use. Okay. Now when I say apply and measure, it could be either measure or calculate, or you vary the value of uh, I test and you make a plot. Any of these things is the same. I will uh, just call it measure, but it could mean any of these things. Okay. Is that part clear? We can wait for uh, the very simple elements we have and see what we get. Okay. So let's say I have a resistor R. Now we can pretend that we don't know what it is, but uh, I will do this experiment. We didn't know what the characteristic was, but or the resistor was hidden in a box. And I apply V test and measure the value of I test. What am I going to get? If I vary V test, what will happen to I test? The question is, in this experiment, if I vary V test and go on measuring the value of I test, what will happen to it? How will it vary? Okay, as many of you obviously guessed, I test would be V test by R. And like I said, we don't know what is in the black box, but if there was a resistor in the black box, what we would find is, let's say I vary V, V test and measure I test. Okay. If I plot it, let's say I vary V test from a negative value through 0 to positive values and plot I test. I will get a straight line passing through the origin and it will have some slope. So if I do find the straight line passing through the origin, then I know it is a resistor or equivalent to a resistor. The inside the black box, uh, let me mark the stuff. So this is the box and I cannot see inside the box, but I just make measurements at these two terminals. Okay. And I see characteristic like this. Now I know that it is a resistor or equivalent to a resistor. Okay, whatever inside, or whatever is there inside, it is equivalent to a resistor. In that, it follows Ohm's law. The current is proportional to voltage. And from this slope, I can also calculate what the value of the resistance is. What is the slope of this line? Uh, this is again a question for the participants. What is the slope of this line? the slope would be 1 by R. So again, if you think of a black box, you don't know what it is. You make this measurement, you find that you get a plot with a, which is a straight line passing through the origin and you take the inverse of the slope. First of all, that tells you it's a resistor and you take the inverse of the slope and that gives you the value of the resistance. Okay. Now similarly, let me say I have a voltage source. That is my element. I don't know that yet. Okay. Now let me say it's a current source. I not. Okay. What I'll do is again it's a black box, so I'll apply a test voltage and measure this current. I test. What will I say in this case? Now this is what is inside the black box, I am telling you that, okay, and I make term measurements only at these two terminals, I am not looking inside, right. Now in this case, what is the kind of plot that I am going to get? Yeah, 
Yeah, my question is, uh, inside the black box is a current source, and I make this measurement at the terminals. What is the kind of plot I will get? Obviously, it's a constant current. The current will not change. You can change rate as all you want, but the current is not going to change. So, the plot that we will get will be a straight line parallel to the horizontal axis, basically a horizontal line. And the value of that I mean, where it cuts the vertical axis, that gives you the value of the current source. Okay, so if it is I naught, this will be I naught. Okay. Similarly, I can uh, instead of using a voltage source, let's say the black box had a resistance R, I could have used a current source instead. Okay. And in this case, I measure the voltage. I measure the voltage. Okay. So again, it's very clear that if I plot I test versus V test, remember in this case I am varying I test and finding V test, but I will still plot I versus V because that's what we have been doing all along. Okay. It's very clear that I will get a graph that is exactly the same as this one. Okay. That is, I will get a straight line passing through the origin and the slope of that will be 1 by R. Okay. Now let's say I have a current source. Can I do the same? Earlier I said that if you have two terminals, you can either apply a voltage and measure the current or apply a current and measure the voltage. Now let's say my black box consisted of a current source. Can I now apply a current and measure the voltage? Is it possible? Do a question for the participants. Earlier I said you either uh, apply a voltage and measure the current or apply a current and measure the voltage. Now is that possible in this case when the black box contains a current source? Now some of you said it is possible and some of you said not. Now this is clearly not possible okay, because we are talking about a case of ideal current sources and this is not possible. Now you can say in practice what happens if I go and connect it? The answer is in practice you will never have ideal current sources, so it is very much possible, okay. So now uh, in principle you can either apply a voltage and measure a current or apply a current and measure a voltage. In practice one of them may not be possible, okay, especially when you have ideal elements. But uh, in principle either of the, I mean, uh, in principle one of them is always possible and you will be able to do that, okay. Now this question will be asked to you in many different ways, right? You could be asked, uh, I'll name, name these terminals 1 and 1 prime. This is a box, black box. You could be asked, what is the IV characteristic? What are the IV characteristics of the black box or what does the circuit look like at the terminals one one point or it will be asked what is the equivalent of the circuit okay
in all these cases the thought experiment or the experiment or the analysis you do is this you either apply a voltage and measure the current and from that you figure out what the uh, what is inside okay when i say what is inside it is equivalent to what is inside for instance let's say you have a black box it consists of two resistors in a series okay what you can measure from the terminals is the combined value of the series combination okay you will not be able to tell that there are two resistors or 20 resistors in series but what you will be able to measure is the equivalent resistance and that is good enough okay because when you have 20 resistors in series it acts like a single resistor whose value is the sum of 20 resistance values okay that is number 1 so this is the analysis you have to do and secondly uh, sometimes you may not be able to either apply a voltage source or apply a current source but uh, then uh, you find that you get stuck with the analysis then you switch to the other one and then go ahead with the analysis okay now with this background let me go back to my earlier uh, question which is i have this circuit okay and it is inside this black box and it has two terminals one and one prime okay now my question is what does this look like electrically or what are the iv characteristics looking into one and one prime so you have to do what i said earlier you either apply a voltage and measure the current or apply a current and measure the voltage so please do that and give me the answer the relationship between the voltage across these two terminals and current through the terminal one or in any other way that you see fit please give me the answer to this what does this black box look like at terminal set one and one prime that's the question so again there is no random guesswork or anything that is necessary okay so many times uh, some students resort to that all you have to do is to approach it systematically so either apply a voltage and measure the current or apply a current and measure the voltage So let's do this uh, and see what we get. I will apply a voltage source. We test. Okay. Now uh, the value of this current source is G times V X, where V X is the voltage between these two nodes. Okay. Whatever the voltage appears there, this V X will be the difference between those two nodes. and now uh, this difference between these two nodes when i connect this we test is exactly equal to we test okay in this particular circuit in this configuration we are seeing both we test and this configuration okay so clearly the current flowing here will be g times latest okay so if i plot let me call this current i test if i plot i test versus v test what i see Would be what kind of shape would I get? What is the shape of this plot?
Clearly, it is going to be a straight line because I test is G times Vx. It is the current of the voltage control current source and that is G times V test. So, it will be a straight line and the slope of the straight line will be G. Okay. Now, what is the two terminal element that we know of which has this characteristic? We know of some two terminal element which has this characteristic. What is that? So clearly, that's a resistor. A resistor has I test versus V test, which is a straight line passing through the up origin. Okay. That is, these characteristics are the same. as a resistor whose value is 1 by G. Okay? So then we can say that whatever is inside is equivalent to a resistance of value 1 by G. Okay? Now I came to the circuit because somebody asked the question about a circuit consisting only of control sources. So like I said, you can have meaningful circuits consisting of only control sources. And this is one example. Okay? Now in this case, uh, this is a voltage control current source and I have defined the controlling voltage to be across the voltage control current source. Okay, across the same element. So in that case, uh, the current will be proportional to the voltage. That means that it behaves like a resistor. Okay. I have G times Vx, where Vx is defined across this. Okay, so that is the special part about this circuit. Vx could be anywhere. In this circuit, it happens to be across the same element. And I can say this is exactly equivalent to a resistance R whose value is 1 by G. Okay, where G is this one. If I call this G naught, just to distinguish it from a general G that I use for conductance, R will be 1 by G naught. Okay? So between the terminals 1, 1 prime, it looks like a resistor. Okay? Any questions about this? Hello? Yes? Hello? Sir, uh, yes, in the last question, in yeah. the last question, you treated the black box. Uh, there was a current source inside the black box. Yeah. But uh, when we plotted the IV characteristic, uh, there was a, 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 a characteristic of similar to resistor. No, it was not. Where was it like that? In this one. Sir, Are you talking about the voltage control? Yes, sir. Are you talking about the voltage control current source? Yes, sir. Yeah, so in that case, sir, here. Uh, the characteristic, that's correct. So in this case, the characteristic comes out to be similar to that of a resistor because the controlling voltage is defined to be across the control source. Okay, Vx is defined like this. The characteristic that we would see will depend on what Vx is. In this case, Vx is defined to be the voltage between 1 and 1 prime. Okay. So this is how the characteristic will be. We will not be able to decide that there was a current source. Sir, but we will not no. be able to decide there is a current source inside. That's correct. We will not be able to decide because this looks like a resistor. Okay. So, and a voltage controlled so current so source or a dependent current source. A voltage controlled current source or a dependent current source is not the same as an independent current source. Okay. So its characteristics will depend on the controlling quantity and it can be different in different contexts. Okay. So that's what is meant by equivalent.
That is, if I put a resistor in a black box or a control source connected like this in a black box or I put 100 resistors in, a seri in series in a black box, all you will be able to measure is that you will have a resistance of some value. Exactly what is realizing that resistance, you will not be able to measure. Okay, so that is what is meant by a black box. Okay. Now there was uh, there is another question. How do we know the voltage across this is Vx? That's the definition of Vx. Okay. When you give a, a voltage controlled current source, you have to say where Vx is in the circuit. And in this particular circuit, I have defined Vx to be the voltage between these two terminals. Okay. So that's the definition of Vx. And I also have to give the value g which is the proportionality constant between this Vx and the current. Okay? That's part of the definition of the voltage control current source. There is a question from Vasu. Please go ahead. Like I was saying, uh, you cannot distinguish what is, in, you cannot figure out what is inside a black box. That is the meaning of the black box. What you can say is that the terminal characteristics, that is the characteristics looking in from the two terminals, uh, one one prime uh, uh, in this case, will be so, like something. So, in this particular uh, configuration, it looks like a resistor. Okay. Any other questions about this? Similarly, you can uh, work out this example for yourself. I will take a current control voltage source, which means that it's a voltage source having a current having a voltage which is some R. I will say Rm just to distinguish it from a resistor. Rm times some Ix. Now I have to define what uh, Ix is, and I will define Ix to be. through the same source, okay? That is, Ix in this case is through the current control voltage source. Then, I call these terminals 1, 1 prime and I will say this is the black box. Now, please tell me what this black box looks like from the terminals 1 and 1 prime, okay? Earlier, I worked out the example with a voltage controlled current source. I think now you should be able to work out the example of a current controlled voltage source by yourself. Okay. And also, now you should understand what is meant by what does the element look like or what does the black box look like between a pair of terminals 1 and 1 point. Okay, I think now you got the idea and uh, in this case, you have to apply a current and measure the voltage because you have another voltage inside, voltage source inside, you cannot connect a voltage source across it, you have to measure a current, like I said, sometimes you have to do that. You push a current I test and you measure the voltage V test, okay. And if you do that, you will clearly see that V test will be Rm times I test or if I plot uh, I test versus V test, I will get, I will get a plot like this, a straight line passing through the origin whose slope is 1 by Rm. 
Okay. So these are the characteristics that I'm going to get. Now, uh, so that means that this also looks like a resistor of value Rm. Okay. So again, so let's say in the first case here, I adjust, uh, I adjust D naught to be one milli Siemens, or I take a one kilo ohm resistor, or in this case I adjust R M to be one kilo ohm. Okay, and define I X to be the current through this branch, or in this case define V X to be the voltage across this control current source. In all these cases, if I enclose these things inside a black box and give you only the two terminals. What you will measure is the resistance of one kilo, and you cannot uh, you cannot uh, distinguish one from the other. Okay. So that is what is meant by equivalent. So all these are equivalent to each other. Now earlier uh, I discussed this already, but uh, it is in the same sense that if you have a voltage source in parallel with something, it could be anything. Okay. Obviously, you cannot connect another voltage source in parallel, but anything other than that is fine. And I put this inside a black box. Terminals one, one prime again. Okay. So now, if I measure uh, I versus V, okay. So let's say I apply a current and measure the voltage across it. What will I see? I test versus V test. Okay, I apply a current and measure the voltage across this element, and I plot I test versus V test. What am I going to get? So the question is, I have a voltage source. Let's say V naught. In parallel with something, it could be anything. It could be a current source, it could be a resistor, or it could be some uh, complicated interconnection of hundred components. What is it uh, going to be? What will be the I test versus V test? The uh, meaning of the question is: I go on varying I test, and I go on measuring the value of a V test for every value of I test. And then I plot I test versus V test. What is the plot that I will see? So somebody said it's parallel to the V axis. That is not correct. In this case, it will be parallel to the I axis because whatever I test you have, you have a voltage source here, right? So V test will have to be equal to V naught. Okay. So whatever the value of I test, you will simply get a plot like this, where this point is V naught. I have assumed a positive V naught. If it is negative, it will be on the other side. But that is the plot. Okay. So uh, this will look like a voltage source. That is the point I was trying to get across. So that means that a voltage source in parallel with uh, anything is a voltage source itself. Okay. So this we discussed earlier. Similarly, if you have a current source in series with a resistor or something like that, it will still be a current source. Because if you measure the IV characteristics, it will look like that of a current source. So that means that it is a current source. Okay. Now there was another question. Uh, From Subhashi is asking if I X was not defined to be like this. If I X were not the current flowing through the control source, then we would not have got this straight line characteristic, and that's correct. So depending on uh, where I X is, we have we have to define it somewhere in the circuit. 
uh, if it is not through this, we are assuming that it's a more complicated circuit and IX is somewhere else. So in that case, IX would, uh, uh, the characteristic I test versus V test would be something else and it could depend on the details of the circuit, okay? Any other questions? We are uh, nearing the end of the session. Okay, so if there are no more questions, we can end the session now. And in the next lecture, we will look at uh, certain other quantities which are derived from voltages and currents, that is the power and energy in elements, and go through all the elements that we know and how uh, power and energy are in uh, the behavior of power and energy in each element. Okay. And then uh, from there, we'll take the discussion forward to another kind of elements uh, and go on. Okay. Thank you. I will see you in the next lecture.